Dead to Me, a short film by Guy Wilson. Over Black. What the fuck are you looking at? London back street, late summer night. Clive, stocky cockney, late twenties, is bow-legging his way down the middle of the road in a top-of-the-range Superman costume, proper fuming. He glares over his shoulder at a drunken couple, norm normally dressed, passing by on the pavement. Oh! Well, fuck yourselves! <laughs> Don't worry, hilarious. we will! Clive kicks a parked car, the alarm goes off. Oh, shut up, you! He carries on stomping down the middle of the street, now with a slight limp. Clive! Clive turns to register the distant voice, then quickens his pace, cape horizontal, ready for flight. Clive, please! Sound of high heels in running battle with pavement. Pavement wins. Oh, the fuck! Oh, I've gone and twisted my ankle now. So you fucking right! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I've said I'm sorry! He barrel chests his way to a T-junction, where the back street meets a main road. A white car zooms by, just in front of him, and he stops, teapot arms. The car alarm ceases. Clive huffs and puffs, preparing for battle, as the pitter-patter of skin on tarmac nags its way nearer. Wonder Woman arrives, half running, half limping. Empty red wine glass in one hand, black high heels in the other. A leg warmer missing. She's drunk and teary-eyed, mascara and makeup running. Hands dripping with spilt red wine, her crown slipping. She clumsily grabs at Clive's red cape, trying to pull him to face her. Get the fuck off me, you fucking slag! He retrieves his cape and turns his back on her again. Please, Clive, please. I didn't mean it. It won't... Again. How can you not fucking mean to fucking suck some fucking cunt's cock? He turns to face her, red as his cape. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're, you're a fucking mess. She drops her shoes to the floor and starts trying to put them back on. Clive reaches up to scratch his head, forgetting he's wearing a Clark Kent wig. It comes off in his hand. He's as bald as Lex Luthor. He chucks the wig into the main road. His other half has managed to squeeze her foot into the left shoe, but fails in her attempt with the right, almost toppling over. Clive laughs. She takes this as some kind of affirmation, slowly standing upright, the equal of Clive's height. She reaches out her arms for the support of his shoulders, smiling coyly. Help me. With a snort of disdain, Clive crosses his arms. She bites her lower lip, then lurches towards him, a zombie nearing its prey. You're dead to me. Clive brushes her arms to the side, her one heel buckles and she topples into the main road. A black cab passes in front of Clive. He reaches desperately to get to her in time. Chloe! But has to jump out of the way of the car himself. We hear the crunch of the body under the car and the screech of brakes. A female passerby screams. Oh, fuck no. Fuck no, fucking hell! Clive lurches to the ground. Chloe has rolled to the side and her red cape is covering her head. He's about to roll her towards him when... Don't touch her. Clive stops, his hands frozen above her body. He looks up momentarily to locate the voice of the passerby. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. He scrambles around on his hands and knees to get to the other side of Chloe. Get out of the road, you fucking idiots! A red car has pulled up in front of them. The beam illuminates the scene. Clive looks up into the headlights and is briefly blinded. Oh, God. Is she? The taxi driver approaches. He has Chloe's long black wig in his hands. Clive carefully lifts the veil. Chloe is motionless, eyes vacant, blood pouring from mouth, luxurious black curls replaced by blood-stained mop. Chloe? Chloe. He bends his hand. He bends, sorry, bends his head down to the road, so he's lying opposite her. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A small group of people form around the couple. The taxi driver that hit her, the driver of the red car that stopped just short of them, 
The male passerby who shouted not to touch her, and the female witness who screamed. She has Chloe's shoes in her hands. She's... She's going to be all right, isn't she? Clive looks up at them desperately, struggling to breathe. He sees the woman holding Chloe's shoes. Yeah, yeah, we need... We need to get those... Get those back on, don't we? He gets up groggily, his spandex ripped at the knees. He staggers towards the woman. She shuffles backwards. Uh, she just, she just wanted me to help her. Put them on her. He reaches for the shoes. The woman recoils. She glances at the other men, then reluctantly hands over what he wants, making sure his hands don't touch hers. Clive sits by Chloe's feet. He starts putting on the right shoe, the one she'd asked him to help her with. Calmed and entranced by the tender act of denial, his breathing softens and his voice becomes childlike. There you go, Clive, Clive. Don't want your footsies getting cold, in the do we? The male watches on exchanged, concerned looks. The lady looks on with disgust. Clive delicately fits the right shoe on, but becomes paralysed holding the broken heel left shoe. He numbly strokes the snapped heel. Blood trickles down the road's white line. He lurches forward and throws up. Vomit lands on Chloe's legs. Oh God, I'm sorry, darling. I'm so sorry. He starts wiping up the sick with his cape. Oh, let's get that off you. Uh, it's coming off. It's all right. It's coming off. He crawls around to lie next to her again, still holding onto her left shoe. Sirens approach. You're so beautiful. He reaches out to wipe blood-soaked hair from her face, then stops himself. Can I touch her now? Can I touch her now? Please. Yeah, mate, you're, you're all right. You're all right. Thank you. He wipes the hair from her face. Blood smears his silver wedding band. We hear a police van and ambulance arrive. Clive puts his arm around Chloe and hugs himself to her chest, a baby nursed by dead mother. Voices muffle around them, Sirens distort to heartbeat shrieks. I heard him say, you're dead to me. Then he pushed her into the road. Okay, all right. Footsteps approach. Two medical gloved fingers press against Chloe's neck, then let go. Heavier footsteps. Black boots encircle the prostrate couple. Come on now, we're placing you under arrest. You do not have to say anything. Clive's hand is taken away from Chloe's body and handcuffed to the one holding the shoe. No. No! Clive removes his face from Chloe's bosom and looks up at the policeman and policewoman looking down at him. The policeman pulls Clive to his feet as he resists. I can't leave her. I can't leave her! You killed her, you bastard! The no! No! Female witness. Clive's legs give way. The policeman grabs him under the arms and starts dragging him towards the police van. Clive strains his neck to keep Chloe in his sight, clinging her black shoe to his chest with his handcuffed hands. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean oh, to. Oh, you should have thought of that. The female witness breaks free from the policewoman, runs towards Clive and spits at his face. Hey! The policewoman restrains her again. The spit lands on Chloe's black shoe. Clive wipes it off on the Superman symbol on his chest. The policeman reaches the back of the van and drops Clive to the floor. Chloe's mangled crown is just out of his reach. Flat on his back, he shouts to the sky. I love you, Chloe! I love you! The camera floats up and up above his prostrate body, above the van, above the scene of destruction. As Chloe's corpse is carried into the ambulance, the police officer lifts Clive's limp figure and deposits it into the van. The doors close on them both. 